Hey everyone, welcome back to another explanation video here with Dr. Professor Teacher. I'm Benny. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at the Damian Wayne character. You see, I was getting a couple of comments a couple of weeks ago in which you guys were asking, Benny, I'm enjoying your explanation videos. Thank you, by the way. You guys are incredible. Um, but would it be too hard for you to go ahead and explain the history of Damian Wayne? Let me know about Damian Wayne. Now, I thought that that'd be kind of cool. I was like, all right, cool. We'll do Damian Wayne. We'll talk about Nightwing. We'll go into spoiler. We'll do like a video for each member of the Bat family and the times that they've been with Batman and they haven't been with Batman. But you know what? I can wait on it. Nothing important is going to happen involving Damian Wayne that I need to rush this video out. Well, then this happened. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them. All right, so let's get into the history of Damian and what the last 15, 18 years of Damian have been. And then I'll tell you why I think he could actually work in the James Gunn thing. Now, Damien was first introduced in 2006, created by Grant Morrison. The idea was, as you probably know, because this is his original origin, Talia found a way to get the DNA from Batman. That's the family-friendly way of stating how she got the DNA, because I don't want to get demonetized. So they made a baby, and that baby was Damien. Damien was then introduced to Batman around 2006. What we discovered was Talia's original plan was to implant Damien into the Bat family to basically disrupt the Bat family, which was a success. You probably know the origin story from the movie or something else, maybe even the origin story here on the channel. But what it boils down to is at the end of the whole thing, they were left ambiguous if it was really his son or not, or a plot from Talia. There was a massive explosion at the ending, and Talia went missing, dragging the barely alive corpse of her son away. Damien was discovered to be alive, but they had to implant a bunch of organs into him to help him survive and keep going. Which is when we started to see the idea that maybe Talia's got a few more Damien's up her sleeve, but we'll get back to that. Damien then periodically would pop up just to kind of be a nuisance to everyone, but his next major event was the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul didn't have access to the Lazarus pits anymore, an old plot point that no longer matters. And he ends up going and trying to like use Damien or Tim or find another body. Tim and Damien end up teaming up even though they hate each other because Damien wants to remove Tim from the equation because he feels that Tim should not be Robin, it should be Damien. Damien's very conflicted right now. He doesn't really know what his purpose is. He's just a trained assassin who's trying to impress Bruce Wayne by killing Bruce Wayne's villains. But this eventually leads to him teaming up with Tim to fight against Ra's al Ghul's things. Batman comes back from wherever Batman is at the time and basically he says, Raj, you come with me. We'll get you another way to be revived. You don't have to take the body of the kids. That resolves with everyone kind of being happy and, well, not happy. Batman and the crew end up saving Roz. Talia takes Damien. They run off. But we discover that during all of this, Batman did do an official DNA test on Damien and confirmed that Damien is, in fact, his son. Now, Damien still isn't Robin at this time. He wants the Robin title from Tim, but he deems it a title that is only with Tim at this moment. This is still about 2006, 2007. During all of this, there's an event going on called Final Crisis. Final Crisis ends up ending with Batman's death. So Darkseid shoots him with Omega Beams, but his body was swapped at the very last second with the body of a clone. So the clone's body has the Batman cowl, everything else is scorched, and it's a skeleton. So Batman has died, and no one knows that it's a clone. The real Batman got thrown through time, and he's literally like doing a Doctor Who adventure where he's like a 1930s detective investigating his own parents' death, and he becomes a pirate. And I think at one point he's a caveman, but that might be a different story. But anyway, we're not here to talk about Batman and his wa timey, whiny, wobbly, timey, whatever, gookiness. We're here to talk about Damien. But during that period, who was Batman was thrown up in the air. So now right before the Battle for the Cal event, Damien had been dropped with Alfred, and I don't remember reading the actual Damien going to Alfred moment. I remember Damien being in the Bat family at this point. I don't remember how the handoff happens. The wiki says that it was in Nightwing 153, where he was shown being left in Alfred's care, and I wasn't reading Nightwing at this time, so it makes sense why I missed it. But basically, Damien ended up being with Alfred, and he was being trained by Nightwing. That was where they were going to leave it at. Battle for the Cowl is the event of who is going to be Batman with Batman dead. And it was Jason Todd who, post-Red Hood, decided he would be Batman with guns. Nightwing, of course, said no to that. Tim said no to that. There was an argument over who the Batman would be. Damien ended up getting shot by Jason Todd. Dick Grayson ends up saving him. Dick Grayson ends up 
overall beating Jason Todd down on a train, and Jason runs off and becomes Wingman, another terrible alias, until they finally made him Red Hood again in 2011's New 52, but once again, not a Jason video. We'll do another one of those later. At this point, we then enter the era that a lot of people enjoy. Dick Grayson is officially Batman in Gotham City, and he's training Damien to be his sidekick. And the two brothers become, like, really close, really tight-knit. They fondly look back in the time of them being Batman and Robin. This goes on for quite a while until Bruce is eventually returned to life. This this is after Bruce isn't around for Blackest Night. This is when Batman and Robin, so Dick Grayson and Damien, are fighting against a bunch of zombies that were brought back to life using the Black Lantern rings. Really awesome. One of my favorite arcs of all time that I read before becoming comic historian. But anyway, eventually Bruce comes back and he decides that Dick Grayson is a better Batman than him. And Damien does a better job learning to be not a psychopath by working with Dick Grayson. So he says, okay, you two are Batman and Robin of Gotham City. Batman then goes off to go build Batman Incorporated. It's a separate thing. He's doing his own thing, and he's building up a basically an organization of Batman around the world. Dick Grayson and Damian are fine being the true Batman and Robin of Gotham City at this time, and that continues onward. There's a little bit of a moment in here where Dick Grayson decides that Damian needs friends, so he's going to go send him off to go do the Teen Titans. And so that's another little thing that happens in there. But what we've gotten to is Damian is finally becoming a member of the Bat family. He's accepted. People like him to an extent. He's not as pissy and angry as a little kid is. He's kind of mixing with the Bat family proper. And that's when issues started. And that's the problem with Damian Wayne. So New 52 came around in 2011. New 52 was touted as being the reboot of the entire DC universe. I've admitted multiple times that while I read a lot of comic books beforehand, New 52 is when I went all in and tried to read everything in DC because it was a reboot. And while before that I was reading Green Lantern and Batman and a few books, I wasn't reading everything. It was very hard to keep up with, so I just didn't bother. But in New 52, I tried reading it all. New 52 kind of regressed Damien personality-wise in a few books. So instead of being the guy that now everyone accepted, they all liked around, he was now the one that they were all kind of like, oh, Damien's here. On top of that, we had a book going called Batman and Robin, which was the adventures of Batman and Damien. But while that was going on, we also had Batman New 52 by Scott Snyder. Batman New 52 by Scott Snyder mostly ignored everything else happening in the Batman mythos, which include Damien. The, the family would show up, but for the most part, they weren't really around. I mean, we had Court of the Owls, Night of the Owls, and then Death of the Family, which is when the Bat family showed up, and then we moved on. Damien's story was over in Batman and Robin and Batman Incorporated, and Grant Morrison decided to end his creation. So Talia this whole time had deemed Damien a failure. She had decided that Damien was being accepted by the Bat family. He had made too many friends. He was not killing his opponents anymore. He was finally not murdering everyone. So she decided she needed a new Damien and she created the Heretic, which was another Damien clone. Big back and forth, Batman trying to save the day, Damien trying to save the day. They're all going up against Talia. Big, big battles. It ends with Damien's death at the hands of the Heretic. And that was the end of Damien. Now, since this is comic books and we need to like, you know, People can't stay dead for very long without a really good reason. Damien was almost immediately brought back to life. Well, not immediately. It did take some time, but basically Batman was distraught. Over in Batman New 52, they barely acted like Damien had died or even was a part of the family at any point. But in every other book, we had the Requiem, which was them dealing with the death of Damien. But Bruce never got over the death of his son and his failure by letting the heretic kill Damien Wayne and Talia getting away with all of this. He never got over it. So Batman and Robin changed over to be like Batman and Zatanna, Batman and Frankenstein. Bat and what it was boiling down to is Batman was looking for a way to revive his son. He was going on an insane tirade to try and revive Damian Wayne. As a matter of fact, what I found really one of my favorites was the Batman and Frankenstein because he got, was contemplating turning Damian Wayne into a Frankenstein monster. That's why they teamed up. And Frankenstein's like, you do not want to give him this life. Look at me. Look at my head is stapled on. Anyway, I don't think he said those exact words, but you get what I'm saying. Eventually, it's discovered that there is a shard of something, something, comic book, mookie, gooky, whatever, that will revive Damien. But that shard is linked to Darkseid and the Apocalypse Planet and all that stuff. So in order to get up there, Batman has to find help to go to Apocalypse to revive his son. He goes to the Justice League, he goes to the Bat family, and everyone's like, Bruce, look, man, 
Like you're really distraught. You just Damien's past. You're overrun with grief. It's time to let him go. And Bruce is like, I know what you mean. I'll build the Hellbat suit. It will suck my life energy out, but I'll be so strong I can punch Darkseid's teeth in. Which is that awesome suit a lot of you guys like to talk about. Batman takes the Hellbat suit, goes to Apocalypse, powers up the gem, brings it back, slams it into a coffin, and Damian Wayne is revived, and him and his father finally have the touching hug that we've wanted for so long. Then DC didn't know what to do with Damian. Like, you can tell he, they didn't know what to do with Damien. So the writer at the time, Tomasi, gave him superpowers. They turned him into Superboy, basically. At this time period, Superboy didn't exist. So Batman had a superpowered son with the powers of Superman. That lasted like a random, like, six to ten issues, I think. And then just Damien's powers just went away. That was literally it. He just woke up one morning and was like, I can't fly anymore and I'm no longer bulletproof. I'm Robin again. And that was how they ended that little weird arc. Now, as you can tell, because everyone likes to complain, myself included, about circular storytelling in comic books. But Damien, other than having a few personality regressions, has had a proper progression. He went from being born, to teaming up and pissing everybody off, to eventually being accepted into the Bat family, to being Robin to Dick Grayson. And then in the New 52 reboot, he was now Bruce Wayne's Robin. And the two of them went on their own adventures, all the way up to his own death and like, confronting his own mother and his evil clone with a sword. Now they didn't quite know what to do with him. So, Batman and Robin, I forget what happened to the comic, but overall, it just kind of spun out. And we got into what's known as the DCU era of DC. This era is like nine to ten months, if even that, maybe a full year? It's the era DC doesn't want you to remember happened, and I'm going to do a whole video on the weird shit that happened in DCU. The concept was, we're no longer going to worry about continuity. Instead, we're just going to let creatives tell amazing stories, which led to some amazing stories. And some stories that make you just go, what the hell? One of those stories was Robin's son of Batman. This was a 12-issue-ish series in which Damien got a new pet a weird bat monster named Goliath that we now all love. And he met his own like side cast of characters like nobody and stuff like that. And the idea was that he would go around the world and correct the things he did when he was training under Talia. Now this was kind of a weird decision with Damien because we had all this progression and then he just started to stop progressing. He went around the world and basically remembered the times when he was an assassin and he was shitty. And then he reflected on that, which was like kind of progression, but it just kind of stalled him out during this DCU period. Because he was no longer with Batman. He was no longer with Dick Grayson. I think at this point, Dick Grayson was still a secret agent. I don't quite know. He may have been. Dick Grayson wasn't doing things with the Bat family. I remember that. He was completely out. And what this eventually led to is DC Rebirth. And that book got canceled. Again, Damien was now stuck spinning. This is the problem with Damien Wayne. DC Rebirth was the apology for DCU and the fix for New 52. So New 52 came out, did amazing when it launched, but after the first year or two, they didn't know what they were doing with the New 52. So what ended up happening was the New 52 kind of like got into a weird point where they just didn't know what stories to tell. The ideas that they had had, like the alien evasion didn't pan out. And that's why they did DCU, because the new 52 was no longer new, and it was no longer 52, so they made DCU. But DCU did nothing but piss off all the fans. That was the era of the bunny battlesuit Batman and the shirt, the powerless Superman. So Rebirth was an apology. Rebirth introduced a couple of new elements into the Damian Wayne life. First off, we got Super Sons. John Kent was officially introduced into the DC universe proper. He was now Superboy and the child of Superman. So of course we needed a Super Sons book in which Damien and John would team up. This was the most obvious progression for Damien. He was willing to work with John begrudgingly at first, but then they became like super best friends. Literally, the Super Sons. But while that book was going on and he was getting progressed over there, we got the Teen Titans Rebirth, which introduced Damien. But here's the problem with that. This wasn't the Damien that was learning to be friends with people and learning to team up and learning what all of this meant. This Damien literally captured and beat up Starfire, Beast Boy, Raven, and Kid Flash to force them to join his team. What made this even more confusing is Starfire was also like 39 at this point or something crazy. She wasn't a teen, I can tell you that. Raven was ambiguous on her age. Was she 15? Was she 45? We'll never tell you! 
Uh, Beast Boy and Kid Flash were young, though. That made sense. But it was weird. It was just a weird setup. And to make it all not make any more sense, over here, Damien's working with John, but with the Teen Titans, he's just being a little... I, I can't swear in here, but you know where I'm getting at. He just wasn't... Like, the progressions were weird. He was being written differently by the two different writers. That didn't last very long. I think I got to, like, issue 20 or 25 over in the Teen Titans Rebirth stuff that was going on. And Super Sons ended up getting canceled way too early and then having, like, 80 different one-shots and stupid stuff. Which is stupid hard to... Con you want to talk about me trying to... Con I didn't know the order for Super Sons. I had to go to a tweet and figure that one out because it goes from, like, Super Sun story. One-off, 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 one-off. Super Sun story. One-off, one-off, one-off. It was just all over the place. Like, how do you even follow this? How do they expect you? How do you want us to follow this, DC? But don't worry, Teen Titans Rebirth kept going. At like 20 to 25, there was a big explosion going on in the world of DC. This was during the uh, No Justice era and stuff like that. But what happened is the Teen Titans officially disbanded, okay? They weren't getting along that well anyway because, you know, Damien was in charge and he wasn't progressing. But they disbanded. But the book didn't disband. Instead... Damien randomly has a brand new team. We don't see him technically beat them up, but the way he treated them all, it was they were the new punching bags, basically. This team was Kid Flash stuck around, but now we had Red Arrow, Lobo's daughter Crush, and this weird genie Jin, who's awesome, and I really want them to bring back Jin. Oh, and Roundhouse. Round, like, he, was a, he was a fat kid that could just roll around and do things. It was He was cool, but definitely not what I was expecting. It was like... Hey, everyone, I, I, he didn't do this, but I expected him to like stick his thumb in his mouth and, and just blow himself up. It was, it was weird, but that was the team. He was like, Roundhouse was bouncy. He was like, bouncy ball the kid. Anyway, that team went for another 25 issues. But during this period of Damien's lifespan, we had a few other things going on. One of which was the death of Alfred. You see, while this Teen Titans group was going on, Batman had lost Gotham to Bane. That's a whole nother thing to worry about. It's the Tom King run. I'll link the video down below or I'll forget to and not put it down there. But either way, just look up Batman, Tom King. It's on the channel. You can find that whole thing. Anyway, Bane told the Bat family to not enter Gotham or he would make them pay. Damien decided because he's so cocky, he's so full of himself that he's going to break into Gotham and defeat Bane all by himself. He gets caught almost immediately and Alfred's neck is broken and the death of Alfred resonates through Damien for like four or five years at this point. We're going to keep bringing that up, but it is an important point because he thinks he, well, doesn't think, he's the reason it all happened. So over in the Teen Titans at the same time, the Teen Titans Rebirth team with Jin and Roundhouse and Red Arrow, they're getting tore apart. Lobo's working for some other villain, which is tearing everyone apart, which Jin's ring gets stolen, and then Damien uses the ring against Jin, and that's how he forces her to do things she doesn't want to do. He's a terrible team leader. And this all resolves with Damien deciding he needs to reflect on what Damien Wayne is, what he is, what Robin is. Is he an Al Ghul? Is he a Wayne? All of that. He leaves all the teams. He's out of all the books. He is gone. So at this point, Damien has decided that he feels that Bruce blames him for the death of Alfred. So he decides that he's going to go on his own, like, a redemption arc kind of a thing. So he decides he's no longer Robin, when I don't remember what he called himself then, because I'm pretty sure everyone either called him Robin or Damien, if they knew who he really was. Even though he was like, I'm not Robin! Ooh! I gave that up! And they're like, okay, Robin. And basically, we get into the book Robin 2021. That's what eventually came out of all of this, like, down the line, okay? So that's when Damien officially comes back in an actual book. In this book, he's decided he's going to go in his redemption arc. Now, Batman's keeping tabs on his son, but he knows that his son is dealing with a lot of grief at the loss of Alfred. So he knows what Damien's doing, but that's all. Damien signs up for a Mortal Kombat death tournament, goes to Lazarus Island, where you have three times to die. His heart gets removed twice? It gets removed once. He might just die the second time. Either way... Out of his three lives, he loses two. He then teams up with his own group of people, which is like Connor Hawk, uh, Flatline, Red Arrow, I think was there. Doesn't matter. They go to this island. He ends up discovering his history with the Al Ghuls, and like he meets Raz Al Ghul's grandmother or mother. Either way, the plan is to have people die to revive the Lazarus demon. So Damien and his crew end up defeating the Lazarus demon. They seemingly have stopped the Lazarus pit and island and demon problems. Then we go to Shadow War. He shows up for Shadow War where he still thinks Bruce Wayne hates him. Shadow War is where Batman and Robin fought against Deathstroke and the Al Ghuls. And that was when Batman finally admitted to Damien that he doesn't blame him for Alfred's death. 
And that was like the big moment of father and son coming back together. But Damien didn't come back as Robin yet. He still isn't technically, but he at least is using the name again. But anyway, Shadow War is that. We then get to Batman versus Robin. So after they finally make amends, Damien's back with the family. Everything's going good. He then shows up as an evil Damien. There's a villain known as Neja. And Neja has mind control Damien into thinking that he is the superior Batman and he needs to kill Bruce Wayne to take the title. So Batman versus Robin is the two of them going back and forth and they're using like this Lazarus pit as like a hub. It's, I think it's on the island. Doesn't matter because Batman versus Robin ends with Neja's plan not coming to fruition, Damien getting his mind control out and the Lazarus pit that they're at exploding as a volcano, which has now led us to Lazarus planet where Damien is seemingly kind of taking the Batman role because Batman is kind of indisposed right now, but he's not dead, but he's not alive again probably a video for a whole nother day or you can just go watch our entire video on Batman versus Robin and that's where we are with Damian Wayne at the moment he's just kind of finally progressing again he's gone back to being Robin but he's kind of taking over like as a more authoritative role ever since Joshua Williamson took over in 2021 on the Robin book Damian's like stall in his progression stopped like he went from 2016 stalled out i openly complained about it all the time and then in 2021 we started progressing with his growth again and it's been great and it's been a lot of fun and that is the history of damian wayne now why i think he can work in the james gunn thing we're way far into this video this is gonna be our longest explanation video ever i'm just now getting to the james gunn thing but i can keep this nice and quick so going back to 1943 no i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> Batman has been having serials in movies this entire time. We only ever got Batman and Robin once in the 1950s and then again in the 90s, okay? And the issue is, it was always decided, how do we treat the Robin character? The moviegoers and the movie creators want to create Batman as this, like, stoic, brooding, I'm all by myself, but I eventually learned to trust people storyline. And every time we get a Batman movie, Batman the Dark Knight Rises, The Batman the entire chain of 90s Batman movies, it's generally decided to pseudo-reboot Batman. And if you're going to reboot Batman, you're not going to have a Robin. So we've got a lot of Batman by himself movies. And then we have the weird era with Chris O'Donnell for two movies. The reason why Chris O'Donnell is so much older is it was decided that they can't have a young Robin because if they have a young Robin, then it's Batman endangering a child. And they start having all those weird worries that they had back in the 60s about homosexuality between Batman and Robin. So it was decided in the movies to just make Chris O'Donnell like an older Robin, which when you actually start to think about it, it doesn't even take that long to think about it, is weird because it's like, yeah, Chris O'Donnell Robin, he's like 22 years old. And Batman's like, Alfred, we're adopting a grown man. This is going to become a kink in the 2020s. Trust me. And if you don't believe me on that, watch the TLC show. Holy crap. That's weird. So anyway, what I'm getting at is we've got a lot of stories involved as Batman starting over. We've got a weird attempt at a Batman Dick Grayson kind of a thing. So if we're going to have Elseworlds going on with the DCU, which is going to be The Batman and The Batman Part 2, and what will most likely be The Batman Part 3, you want your other Batman, your DCU Batman, to stand out. So having a Batman and Robin be the story we go to right away, I love that idea. Now, why use Damien? In my opinion, Damien is probably the best version of Robin because Damien is Batman's true son. He's his true heir to the bat. All the stories of who's Batman in the future is either Terry McGinnis or Damien Wayne. Some of you are going to be like, well, what about Dick Grayson? Honestly, I think Dick Grayson is amazing as Nightwing because he's what Batman should become. A Batman who's hopeful, who can save the city, who's willing to work with people. And so being Nightwing and not Batman, I think works better for him. Jason doesn't make sense as Batman because every time he becomes Batman, he brandishes guns. But Red Hood is an amazing side character that I'm a huge, huge fan of. I got the, the Red Hood bat symbol right here. Like, I love the Red Hood character and I'd prefer him to be Red Hood instead of Robin. And Tim, DC doesn't know what it's doing with Tim. Okay? It, I, I, we're in a weird situation where they don't know what they're doing. Tim was a part of the Teen Titans in the New 52, and then he became a member of, the, of Young Justice, and they gave him an all poop brown suit, and they called him Drake, and that didn't stick. And then he disappeared again for like five years, and now he's back in his own comic that I don't even find interesting and I'm not even reading. He showed up in Chip Zdarsky's run. Thank you, Chip Zdarsky. Tim, as Robin, is cool. But 
He's better as a solo Robin, as a red Robin. As a Robin who works with Batman alongside Batman, I like Damian Wayne. And what I also like about this is instead of us spending the next 20 years building up Dick Grayson as Robin and then building up Jason Todd as Robin and then building up Tim Drake as Robin and then getting to Damian, we can go to Damian and now we have Nightwing, Red Hood, and Red Robin. We can expand the Bat family in any direction because we are starting at one Robin who has stayed Robin and will keep being Robin. We don't, he won't age out of it or whatever. We'll just have him stay Robin and then maybe eventually becomes Batman in the DCU. But we already get Nightwing, Red Hood, and we already get Tim. Because as much as I would love to see a Robin movie where they each become their superheroes, we also have to keep in mind the amount of money that they're actually throwing at the DCU. And if the answer is, give me a Batman movie with Dick Grayson as Robin, and then give me a Batman movie with Jason Todd as Robin, and then give me a Batman movie with Tim Drake as Robin, or we get a Booster Gold show, we get a, a Superman Reborn show, we eventually get a Red Hood movie. We don't have to build up five years to that. I'm on board. So that's why I think Damian Wayne could actually work as the Robin of the DCU. And why I'm excited for what they're going to do, because we're going to get your true solo Batman detective stuff, and we're going to get a Batman and Robin. So I'm excited. But that's it. I hope this helps you guys understand who Robin is, Damian Wayne version, and what's going on. And let me know in the comments down below any other characters or teams you want me to do these long revamps on. The plan right now is to finally get to my manga versus comic books video. It's scripted out. I've got it scripted out. People are asking about it. I'm telling you right now, it's not what you guys think it is. I'm not going to go, like, I'm just going to go the pros and cons of both of them. Anyway, check out Manga Storian. It's officially released. Next week's video will be manga versus Western comics, unless James Gunn announces something else. Now, <laughs> and on that note, I'll see you guys next week, hopefully, for whatever video this turns out to be. Thank you so much for your continued support. Like, subscribe, please.